In the last episode, I played Commander Keen, Invasion of the Vorticons, Episode 1, Marooned on Mars. Commander Keen gets the parts back, repairs the beam with bank and mega rocket, and heads back for home. To Keen's surprise, there's a giant ship looming above the Earth. Wouldn't you think that the giant ship that's ready to destroy the Earth would have done so already? Anyways, Commander Keen somehow manages to get home before his parents do. What were the parents doing while the first episode was occurring? More importantly, why didn't the parents hire a babysitter for him? He's eight for God's sake! Wow, I can clearly see parents of the year for those two. As if that wasn't enough, Commander Keen brought home an unexpected visitor from Mars. Okay, I can accept the fact that Billy Blaze got home first, which had no babysitter to begin with, but to bring an alien home? Yeah, that's going to draw a lot of unwanted attention from not only the neighbors, but the press, Area 51, and so on. And to make matters even weirder, they let Billy keep him. And so ends the first episode. Now we move on to episode two, The Earth Explodes. Before we get started, let me point out that Keen enters the ship through the rear, literally. Yeah, I know, very immature of me. Anyways, the story now has Commander Keen on board the Vorticon mothership, which has eight Tantalus rays aimed at specific cities. You got New York, London, Cairo, Moscow, Sydney, Paris, Washington, and Rome. Couldn't the Vorticons have planned a vacation instead? It would be interesting to see them walk around the Eiffel Tower, visit the Capitol, and so on. But instead, they decide to blow up the Earth. Enough of me rambling about pointless stuff. Let's get to the gameplay. For the most part, it remains the same as the first episode. Unlike the first episode, there are more forks in the road, which makes for more decision making, but you have to play more levels. In the first episode, the fewest levels you can beat the game with is six. This time you have to beat the eight levels that guard each Tantalus Ray, plus the two required stages, so overall you have to beat at least ten stages. The main objective is to stop the Vorticons from blowing up the Earth. That's easier said than done because the challenge is higher this time around. While you do get more guns to defend yourself with, there are also more enemies to deal with. The Vorticons themselves return and are sporting yellow, and there are new enemies on board. There are the Vorticon Elite, which are tougher and fight back. They are in charge of protecting the Tantalus rays. There are hovering tanks that shoot multiple times, red guys that defy gravity by walking on walls and are actually helpful, and of course the youngsters that are jacked up on something because they go crazy. Okay, I've heard of Bring Your Child to Work Day, but this is something that goes way beyond anything I've ever seen. To me, it's more like bring every single Vorticon child to blow up the Earth Day. Maybe they're in training. Who knows? As if having the youngsters on board wasn't enough, there's no parental supervision. In the exclamation point, you can actually shoot the young Vorticons. Who's the real antagonist? Commander Keen for shooting the young Vorticons? Or the Vorticons who want to blow up the Earth? The graphics are also well done like before, and you do get the sense of being inside a section of the ship. One thing I notice is that the ship doesn't look like it's floating in space. Instead, it looks like it's floating over someone's blue tile floor. Except the grout isn't green unless you've got mold growing on it. The level layouts are also more challenging this time around, and there are more hazards to contend with. One new feature is that you can turn the lights on or off. While not common, they do appear when need be. What happens is that the Vorticon Elite can't jump if it's dark. That's really weird. Imagine if someone turned off the power and... That's better. Let's continue. Perhaps the most bizarre mechanic is that you can stand on the Vorticola cans. And if there's a stack of them, they make a great tower for you to climb up. If only our cans of soda can support our weight in real life. But then again, I'm thinking way too deeply into this, and I need to stop. One interesting thing to note is that you can actually get a game over rather abruptly. To do so, all you have to do is activate the switch that's running the Tantalus Ray. Note to the person who carries the nuclear football, do not let Commander Keen anywhere near that thing. One thing I didn't mention in the first episode is that there are statues that gave you hints. Well, that concept is back, but this time it's the Vorticon Elders that help you out. Unlike the first game, which had five statues, there are only two Elders to help you out. And they're being held in stasis fields, so they can't escape. Chances are they're probably being forced to do this. Overall, Episode 2 is a lot of fun. The challenge may be a little more difficult, but that only adds to the charm that Commander King brings with. One minor setback is that you can die much easier this time, and also the backgrounds lack variety. Commander King Episode 2 gets four stars out of five. 